Hello and welcome to your new Foff Admire Air 7000 cover lock machine. Your cover lock is a hybrid machine between a cover stitch and a serger overlocker. So you get the best of both worlds and you get air threading. So I'm going to walk you through setting it up for a basic four thread overlock and point out what some of the things that you'll see on the screen are telling you to do. So when you first turn on your machine, you get a message on the screen here that says, please raise the presser foot to calibrate. So I'm going to do that here. So when you turn it on, the first thing you're going to see is this information screen. At the very top is where you can choose the stitch that you're going to do. So there's a whole list of 26 different stitches on here, which is wonderful. And the four thread overlock is stitch number three. So we're going to choose a four thread overlock. I can go down to this little I button right here, which is the information screen. So this is going to bring up three different tabs that are all going to help me set up my machine. It's going to tell me what to do. It's practically foolproof. So this first one here is showing you where you're going to have the needles or that you're going to have two needles and that you're going to have the upper and lower loopers threaded, but you are not going to have the fifth thread, the chain stitch thread here. We're going to go over to the next tab and it has these six icons, which are some physical things that you need to do to the machine to set it up. The machine can't do this part for you. I'm going to pull out the waist tray here just so we can open up this um, the front cover. But the first thing I'm going to show you is this icon here, which is telling you that you want to have the A cover on. This is the one with the space for the knife, so it's one that you use for surging. And when you open this up, this one does actually have, you're not going to be able to see it on the camera here, but this does actually have a little A on it. So this is the cover that you're going to use for your four thread overlock. There's also um, an icon here that is telling you that the knife should be in the upright position, that you do not need to have the two thread converter engaged, so it's going to be out here. Your stitch finger should be set on N instead of R, so that is right here. Your presser foot pressure dial, which is on the side of the machine here, should be set to N, and mine is. And then the last thing here is telling you that the upper looper should be in the upright position, which is for surging, not cover stitch where it gets locked down below. So there is a lever here that you can move from A to B that will lock that upper looper in the upper or lower position. So we have our set on A. And then this tab number two here tells you about the stitch that you are going to use. So the four thread overlock is for all seams where stretch or give is needed, such as neck edges, side seams, sleeves, etc. And I use this stitch for most of the knit garments that I create. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that I to get me out of that information screen. So this screen here is giving you some information about the stitch itself. So right here you have a picture of what the stitch looks like. The suggested needle size, here it says 90. The position of your needles. So you've got five needle positions here. The A and B, which are the two rear needle positions, are what you're going to use for the four thread overlock. This icon here indicates the cutting width or the width of your stitch. So there is a dial right here that will move the knife in and out away from the table. Here you have your speed control, which you can knock down if you don't want it to go too fast. I like to go fast, so I keep mine on five. Here is your differential feed. The machine is going to set up the feed for a basic four thread overlock, normal stitching. If you are using some sort of tricky fabric, um, you can go ahead and switch your differential feed settings. You're going to know how to set those up after you do a couple of test stitches on the actual fabric that you're using. This is your stitch length. Again, you can adjust that. This is just what the machine says are the best settings. 
This icon here that looks like backwards parentheses around a straight line are your tension settings. You can set each thread tension individually if you need to make adjustments, again, based on the thread choices that you've made, the fabric choices that you've made, you meet, need, might need to make some adjustments and you will know again after you do a test stitch. Okay, so that is that screen there. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the inside of the machine here and some of the settings that we need to move in order to thread. So you have a lever right here which has two spaces, one for sewing, one for threading. So we're going to move this over to the threading side and then we're going to turn your hand wheel towards you until it locks. So you will hear that unmistakable sound. This is your little air tubes basically locking into place in order for this whole process to work. The air and the thread have to go someplace. So they lock into place here. Okay, we are now set and ready to start with our lower looper. You can go ahead and thread right to left here. You don't necessarily have to start with the upper looper. It doesn't matter which one you do first. I just find it easier to go right to left. So I'm going to take my green thread path here, down here. Now I do have my presser foot up and I'm going to leave it up the entire time that I'm threading. So I'm going to take maybe an extra 15 or so inches of thread and leave it hanging down below. You're going to put two and a half to three centimeters, about an inch of thread into this hole here. When you press the button here, you're going to find that your thread is going to come out of the lower looper. And there it is. Awesome. Now we're ready for the red path, although mine is more of a dark pink. And again, we're going to follow those guides. Leave 15-ish or so inches of thread. And again, about an inch of thread into that hole. Now, just make sure that your thread isn't going to catch on the accessory holders here. This is actually where you can keep your stylus. I just keep mine out here. Again, we're going to press the button, and you're going to see your thread come out of the upper looper. Oh, yes. That never gets old. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and do the blue path here, which is our right needle. So bring it along here. There are several thread guides to help you here. And I do find my tweezers a little easier to use for this one. And go ahead and thread it. You can use a needle threader, which is in the accessory box. I just find it easier to use my tweezers. And then the orange thread path, although my thread is pink because I do not own orange thread, but whatever works. And again, I'm going to grab my tweezers for this one, quick and easy. Thread it right in the needle. So easy. There's so much space here that it's very easy to thread the needle because you can really get your hand in there. And while I'm talking about threading again here, I recommend that you get four or five different colored threads. Ideally, they're going to match the purple, green, red, blue, and orange pass. That way, when you're doing your test stitches, especially when you're first learning, you can really tell if any of your threads need to be adjusted. So just a little tip there for when you're starting. And because it's so easy to change the threads, every time you do a new stitch or you're learning a new stitch, do it in your four or five colors first, and then just change out to the color that you're using for your actual project. <clears throat> it's so fast and easy. Okay, so this is all threaded now and we are ready to do a test stitch. The first thing that you need to do though, is you need to take this off of threading and put it back to stitching. So if you forget, which I have done on occasion, you try to close the cover, it will not close if it is in the threading position. So you're going to go ahead, move that back over to stitching, and those little air tubes move out of the way. You do not need to take these threads and put them underneath the presser foot. It's going to automatically 
do that. They're going to move through as soon as you chain off. So we're going to go ahead and close this now. We're going to lower our presser foot and I'm going to go ahead and start a chain here. Okay. I've got a little piece of scrap fabric here and I'm going to do a test stitch and make sure everything looks good. Okay, wonderful. Yes, my stitches right on the edge, meeting as they should right here. Looks beautiful. I am ready to go. I hope you are also ready to go and that you have a great time using your new Admire Air 7000 cover lock machine. Have fun.